Earth. Yeah, he's just still on Earth. Like, this whole time they've been fighting, and Weez has just been, like, continuously ordering sushi and food, and, oh, it's so silly. Also, Weez is voiced by Ian Sinclair, and it's great. Yes. Also, the voice of Brooke from One Piece. Another great character. Also, Beerus is voiced by Jason Douglas, who was the cat in Azamanga Dayo. Also, oh, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that that's your, a thing. Your love or hate isn't the issue. Each <laughs> one to me, I love the cat. It. No, Beerus is superior cat. But then, of course, Beerus goes back, drops uh, Goku back down to Earth and literally just throws him on the ground. Yeah. Which is my favorite scene. Because he literally floats him down gracefully and then just pops him on the ground. I also love the scene, the next scene where he's like, all right, I will destroy Earth. And then he just goes... Pew. Yeah, he <laughs> destroys like... this little pebble and he's like, <laughs> all right, I'll come back and destroy the rest later when I feel like it. Okay. Um... Hey guys, I'm Bill, a one-time Instagram blogger and now a podcaster. And I'm Alex, the Chaotic Neutral. And together we are the Gaming and Collecting Podcast. A brother-sister duo that talks about gaming. And also anime. And don't forget the collecting, or sometimes. Ah, forget it. We're just a nostalgia podcast at this point. But anyways guys, thanks for joining us as we discuss the games that shaped us. So, how you been? Well, life's been interesting recently, but we're here, and it's happening. <laughs> yeah, so we have a bit of an announcement at the end of the episode. We're going to save that for later, but, uh, you know, yeah. before we get yeah, to that, I how, how have you been otherwise, other than the shittiness of life? Yeah. It's just there's been a lot going on at work recently, and just with the dance stuff, it's it's been a lot, but, I mean, I can't complain. I can't believe it's November, which means it's going to be Christmas. It's and so like, fucking cold. Yeah, it's really I cold. I hope you can't hear... Cold. I can't hope you can't hear in the background, but I do have the heat going, because it is very cold. Um... And I finally caved in and turned the heat on. See, I turned my heat on, but it, like, didn't heat my house up very well. So I've been, like, it's actually really warm down in the basement, which is really nice. Huh. Um, but, yeah, it's been one of those. Like, I woke up this morning and I was like, it's so cold and I don't want to get up. And you changed your name to Gremlins on the Roof. I just noticed that. <laughs> um, oh, cause, yeah. Because we've uh, officially... Finally found a replacement for Zencaster. We're now using uh, StreamYards. Woo! So that's fun. It, it it works so far. So that's a good sign. Knock on wood. No more having to use Craig, which sucks. Yeah, Craig. Scary Craig. He creeps me out. Also, I get a fun that... brick house behind me, which is pretty fun. <laughs> which Even is great my... other than... <laughs> It's just great, other than we're not recording the audio of the video for this. So. Well, yeah, I have no makeup on, and people would be horrified by how hideous I am. I also love how the tree in the background is just screwing up your uh, custom, <laughs> yeah. your, your brick house. <laughs> I have a glowing tree behind me. Uh, well, it's like a light-up tree. Not a Christmas tree, just a nice little tree. And I have it in my living room, because it, you know, I love, like, I hate using the overhead lights. I like using just little lights, you know? Sitting in the dark is my happy place. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, but it's it's glitching out the the brick wall behind me, so it's kind of taking away from me and my brick house with gremlins yeah. on the roof. Yeah, it's been one of those like it's been it's so far it's been just kind of like the the whole like we're getting into closer to winter has just been really becoming apparent. I mean, like, even, like, Christmas, like, I was like, shit, I need to Christmas shop next month. And I'm like, I don't know what to get anyone. I know. I mean, thankfully, I, so I went to go check how much vacation time I had left. Um, And I actually had exactly three days. So I just took the entire week of Christmas off. Mm, that's what I did, too. So I just wanted some time. I I need some time off from work. It's well, combined so with. Bad. 
combined with so we get Christmas and the day after Christmas off, plus those three days for that week that I'm using for vacation, plus the two weekends and New Year's. That's literally a 10 day vacation, which is very nice. Yeah. I think we both need it. I think it's been a lot, a lot of good stuff this year, but also just a lot of like, it's been stressful. Uh, yeah. Work's been really stressful. But dance has been like a fun thing. The competition is in like two weeks, which is like uh, insane to me. Like I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready. Like uh, we'll see. Oh, if you notice um uh, you notice Alex's mic sounding any better, she actually uh Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> she finally got that fixed uh, after yeah. her wonderful angel ruined it. <laughs> yeah, my little rat ruined my mic and I finally got this one fixed. Um I still am going to try and find my little USB extension cord, though, because, like, it's still... Oh, I just got the hiccups. It's still kind of, like, awkward. I need I need to perfect my setup a little bit more, but I'm working on it. She's currently in her B-bed, if you're wondering. Faithful yeah, I've, listeners. I've B-bed. fixed up... My setup's gotten a bit better. I just recently finally got the, uh, the soundboard that our mother got for me, uh, christmas last year functioning now Yay. and i've got my mic going through xlr now so i don't hopefully roboting will f- will not be a thing anymore because that yeah. is really annoying your sound is definitely a lot better now like recently i had noticed like when we would be recording in other ones like there'd always be like this like psh- sound like behind you whenever you mm. talk so it definitely sounds a lot better are you gonna add some fun little sound baboots or something uh, I got to play around with it a bit more. Honestly, I want to get some art for this wall here because this wall is completely barren. And I'm hoping to someday do video, especially because, like, <gasps> I mean, I, I'm hoping we to gotta have, like, reschedule our recording times. Then I'm not because <laughs> I take uh, one makeup off after a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> you can just wear a, wear a Darth Vader helmet. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I'm not doing that. Uh, get out. Oh, oh yeah, so I, wait, you're in your own house. Damn it. Yeah. So Damn I bought it. a new I bought a new figure. Came in yesterday. Oh. Nice. It's a Jujutsu Kaisen, Jujutsu Kaisen figure. Is it? Oh, I know who it is. It's knockoff Kagome. It, it's I can't it's remember depressed her name. Depressed Kagome. <laughs> you can't the, remember her name and you bought a figure. All I remember is she's the teacher from the other school. And she's basically my my impression of what it would have been if Kagome never went back and just became depressed. Yeah, uh, that is accurate. I feel like there's probably a fan fiction of that. Probably. You said it you got exists. a new figure too, right? I did. I actually pre-ordered it a while back and I kind of forgot about it until like I got like Crunchyroll was like, hey, I'm taking your money. And I was like, what? And then I said, oh, yeah, I, I ordered a a vash the stampede uh from trigun uh it's the trigun stampede version uh but i ordered it it was a pop-up parade and it's really really nice i'm happy with my purchase i'm still Hmm. waiting on my two one piece figures though that apparently just are like delayed because i think those are supposed to come before the trigun one so yeah so it's all right the your figure i ordered from crunchyroll that got lost Apparently shipped, so it's going to be coming to your house at some point, so I'm going to have to go get that. Sweet! (laughs) Free figure! Yay! I mean, realistically, I ended up buying it later on because I thought it was lost, so I'll just have two of them, (laughs) but... Oh. Well, you can always sell it. Someone will buy it. Uh, Oh, yeah, also, speaking of shipping, I sent one of my, my dance shoes off to get... So, my dance shoes, they have, like, little taps on them, and you can get them replaced. Uh, and I was getting them replaced because I noticed that one of them was going to, like, fall off soon. Um, and I didn't want it to fall off at, like, a rock disc. So I ended up buying another pair. Well, actually, our mom did, which was really nice of her. Thank you, Mom. Uh, she bought me another pair. And then we sent them off to get, re- re- like, new tabs on them. But I haven't gotten them back yet. And I'm like, I have a competition this weekend. And I'm like, I don't know how that's going to go. So, <laughs> hooray! New shoes that are not broken in yet. <laughs> your your mic, your, your mic literally just gave up. Like it was like I can't do like those me. Tones. I'm giving up on life. Goodbye, world. 
So before we get into our topic, what are you drinking? And I don't care what is in your water bottle. <laughs> well, <laughs> you will. I'm drinking a bottle that the source Christer 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 Nature Alpine Spring Water by CG Roxanne. There's 16.9 fluid ounces. Which is 1.05 pints, 500 milliliters. Um, it's always bottled at the source. And for water quality information in the bottled water report, contact CG Rocks and LLC by email address. <laughs> There's no nutritional facts, but you because can Because it's, <laughs> it's fucking water. It's fucking water. Go fuck yourself. You can recycle it for five cents in Maine, New York, and that's it for a refund. Please recycle. It says it on the bottle, Bill. Let me see. Do you see that? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> I'm gone. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. oh lovely. So I'm drinking a recycle. monster. No, wait. The Beast no, Unleashed, which is no. essentially well, Monster Energy. Regurgitate it right now. Monster makes energy uh, makes alcoholic beverages now. That's that's, that's terrible. Yeah, they're kind I of scary because to... they go down really fast, and it's like, uh oh. <laughs> I remember I had a friend who would always drink Monsters and Jaeger, and she would mix them together. And, like, I took a sip once, and I was like, that's disgusting. That was the worst thing ever. <laughs> and she was like, it's great. And I was like, I think it's mostly I don't really like Monster, and I didn't really like Jaeger. So I thought it was terrible. But I, I just, still I was, remember the Whenever first... I think of Monster, I just think of her and her Monsters and Jaeger. I still remember the first time in middle school when I had a Monster, or it might have been a Red Bull. Either way, it was one of those energy drinks. And I remember I was a fucking nightmare that entire night. <laughs> like, like I was fucking. I was fucking. Your camera, your camera just froze, and it was stuck on your face doing this. Lovely, um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, um, anyways. Oh yeah, I'm anyways. going to uh. Well, at the time of this recording, it's going to be probably like two weeks after, but I'm going to uh, Rhode Island Comic Con this uh, weekend. So, are you going to get me some One Piece merch? If I see anything, like I don't know what I'm gonna what I'm gonna see this year. I'm only bringing like a hundred bucks, so I'm gonna be pretty limited. But uh -huh. wink, wink, nudge, I really nudge. Have, I don't really have the money to spend. This was get kind of an impromptu. One piece bill. It was kind of an impromptu trip because I really want to, I really want to see some friends. So yeah, that that's good. I would definitely go, but I have a ton of stuff this weekend for dance. Like we have a little yep. workshop on Saturday, and then the competition on Sunday, and then the next weekend is again something on Saturday, and then it's so many weekends. So this whole month of November is just like, <laughs> eh. yeah. Oh, well, and I. Oh, wait, no, I shouldn't say this on camera. Never mind. I'll tell you <laughs> off camera. Well, okay. off, off podcast. <laughs> yes. Um, well, anyways, though, we should probably get into our topic for this episode. We're doing another three anime films. Woo. The fifth one we've done. Yay. Um, so Beans. this three anime films, we were a little... Uh, we were a little more basic this time around. We didn't do any original films. We instead did three films based off of uh, larger properties or like yeah. long running anime series. And uh, for this one, we've decided to cover three films in particular. We're doing uh, Kaguya Sama Love is War, The First Kiss Never Ends. Um, what the hell happened over there? <laughs> Well, I was trying to make a face into the camera, and then I forgot how close the mic was, and then I rubbed my nose. Okay. Um, we also are going to cover Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. Woo! And then finally, the, mo the, the most hilarious of the three movies we watched, uh, we, we're going to cover Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie, A Pyramid of Light. 
Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it was it was something, all right. Oh we'll yeah, see. something. So something terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. But to cover the films, I figured we'd go in the order that we uh, we originally them. watched them. And for this one, we start. So basically, the film that was the main catalyst for this episode was uh, Kaguya-sama, Love is War, The First Kiss Never Love Ends. Is Love is War. Love is War. No, it's more like Love's a Show. No. Daddy, <laughs> Daddy, do. Daddy, Daddy, do is the best opening. Fight me. <laughs> I don't know. Loves the show is pretty good. Um, Fight me. But anyways, so the backstory to this one was this film was announced like a good year ago. And I remember the hype from the fandom was pretty big because the show kind of just ended and it ended on a bit of a cliffhanger because it basically it ends with them finally confessing their love. The but then it's Yep. On top of the clock tower. But then it's kind of like, what, what, what happens next? Uh, and manga readers, manga readers knew very well, but anime only watchers were very confused. So this film was announced as the first kiss never ends. And for people who read the manga, like myself, we immediately recognized that this film would be covering the Snow Queen arc of the uh, the manga, which is one of the most important uh, in terms of character development. So I remember because this film was released right around Christmas of. 2022 in Japan, although it wouldn't see a U.S. theater release until around Valentine's Day, I want to say. Uh, no dub. Uh, and ironically, the dub for this film wouldn't come out for almost a year. Um, it only recently came out a couple months ago, like a complete stealth release, because like for people kind of gave up hope on the dub for this film ever coming out, and then suddenly it was just out one day, and everyone was like, oh. It's here. Um, yeah, Whoa. it was here. It's on Crunchyroll, and it's split up into four parts because... Yeah. You can't watch it as a movie. You can only watch it as four episodes. But it's here. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, yeah. basically, you're watching a film, but it is, it, it's broken up in, with, like, intros and outros in between every few minutes. I wish they did, like, a marathon mode where you could just watch it as a film. But it is what it is. Maybe for the home video release, that'll be absurdly expensive because fucks, fuck uh, Antiplex. <laughs> but, um... Honestly, all of them. <laughs> They're all expensive, even well, Crunchyroll. So, I mean, Crunchyroll's DVDs are at least like the price of most DVDs. Um, mm -hmm. it's fucking Aniplex, it's like two hundred dollars for a box set. Oh like, yeah, go that fuck, is. Go fuck yourselves, and then Sentai's are cheap until they go out of print, and then good luck. <laughs> yes, that's why so. I'll never, I'll never be able to watch Haikyuu legally. Yeah. <laughs> well, hike you dubbed legally. Yeah. Well, actually, it might be even harder now because apparently, uh, any. Well, actually, no, you can watch it on high dive. Never mind. <laughs> forget, forget this. Uh, forget this. No, tangent. it's off high dive. Uh, no, they took everything off. You can't even watch it on high oh, dive. Oh, yeah. The, the license is probably gone. Yep. Well, but, anyways, so. Going into this, eventually this film did come out, and I watched it the night it released, and then we watched it about a month later. And mm -hmm. to sum this film up, it essentially is... So this film is 100% canon, and yes. it takes place immediately following the events of the end of the third season, where now we're kind of getting a recap of... They're now, quote-unquote, confessed their love, but they haven't really yes. confirmed they're together yet. Also, so, Kaguya used tongue. Yeah, that's one of the most funny scenes where, <laughs> where she's like explaining the kiss to uh, Ayasaka, and um, <laughs> she immediately it just cuts to her sticking her tongue out, and it's like it just basically is kind of like, "Yep, she did it." Yep. And then you get the <laughs> and slow... Ayasaka is just horrified. Yeah, well, because she gets the horrible realization that like Kaguya had a grown-up kiss first, not like a cute kiss. Yeah, and and Kaguya being Kaguya has no freaking idea what the difference is, and then she slowly has the realization, which just breaks her brain. Yes, and it ends up causing her to go into this state of mind called small Kaguya or little Kaguya, yep. and essentially it's all one giant like personification that's supposed to be a metaphor. Mm -hmm. uh, in reality, she's just kind of like her brain is fucking scrambled right now, and she's acting like a child for no reason. But um. They metaphor it by having her be chibi in the in the classroom, and 
Mayuki wants to like talk to her about things, but she's in this tiny little state and he like doesn't know what to do about it. Yeah. And eventually it gets to a point where like Chica and uh, you leave the room to go do stuff. And then he's to try and talk to Kaguya. He ends up going down to her level and he becomes chibi as well. And they start having nonsense. Yeah. Just nonsense. (laughs) But then the best part is Miko shows up late and she walks in and then all she sees is them in their normal forms, just like doing this ridiculous shit. And she has Mm -hmm. no fucking idea what's going on. She's like, I'm out. I'm out. And eventually this causes Kaguya to fall asleep where we get shown basically the metaphor of Kaguya's messed up subconsciouses. She, it's basically a court. Yeah. It's one and of my favorite like little parts yeah. of it. It's so the whole, funny. The whole metaphor of like the, the, the whole inner mind of Kaguya is like the most entertaining part of this film, especially because it's completely self-aware. Yeah. Um, Where you have, a uh, little Kaguya, who is the current one in control, then you have normal Kaguya, and then Ice Kaguya is like supposed to be like the prosecutor of the courtroom, and then you have the judge, which is uh like this child personification of Kaguya, even though they're all the same character. Yeah. And they get into this massive argument where eventually like Ice Kaguya just fucking has it and just throws a fucking hammer at L- little Kaguya, which basically forces her into control Mm -hmm. and then the film's plot basically comes along where the whole idea of this film is basically ice kagia wants mayuki to basically confess his love to her Mm -hmm. who she believes is the true her true self even though in reality kagia is like all of them yeah and she uses such fucking mixed signals that like Mayuki has no fucking idea like what she's trying to say. And basically the whole plot kind of goes through them basically going back and forth. She's being an ice queen, but like she's basically just a massive Sundari, like more than she was originally in the series. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you, you all right? I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but <laughs> there's a lizard on my table. Oh, <laughs> I see a tail. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a snake. <laughs> I gotta turn off the virtual back. <laughs> um, she looks scared the shit out of me. Come here. Come here. Oh, oh, do you see the tail? I saw the tail. <laughs> but anyways, um, so the film kind of goes through its whole if plot. If my like, mic turns off out of nowhere, you know why? Just keep her away from it. Um, you got gremlins on your table. I do. But yeah, so the the one of the so this film kind of goes through the whole thing and eventually it uh, accumulates with um the Christmas where they both finally like have the big breakdown to each other where they're basically like we're both kind of messed up and then Kaguya finally accepts herself for who she is and then Mm -hmm. um. The film ends with them basically, hi Tilly. Uh, basically, ends with them going on a proper date, yes. and oh god, I'm sorry, she's pulling on the cord. Okay, do you see her? No, <laughs> she's off camera right now. <laughs> I see a tail. <laughs> I'm so sorry. She's she's being distracting. But anyways, you're saying they go on a date. They go on a date and that kind of ends the film. But to actually break this film down now, it's very. So like in the show, the best character is the narrator because he yes, goes so extra on like everything oh. like Ian there, Sinclair, right? Or Ian Sinclair is Ian Sinclair. Yeah, he just he's makes so everything good. he's in better. Um, But there's a point like where like he uh kaguya like tries on some perfume and like they go into this whole spiel about how perfume has to be like oh it starts yeah. it starts off smelling like old lady and then it it slowly like refines into like this perfect scent like and kaguya is or something kaguya is basically running away from uh, mayuki because the perfume's not ready yet and because she's running away from him um she's sweating a little which causes the perfume to accelerate like quicker than normal to that perfect smell sooner <laughs> yeah to the perfect smell and it literally goes to ian sinclair going and right now the her sweat has 
combined with the perfume and it's reached that perfect level and she smells good <laughs> it's like it's just the way that he says it is so fucking good and then like it <laughs> Just like throughout this part, like there's a whole point where it shows the, the courtroom and Ian Sinclair goes, by the way, this is just a metaphor. I think this this isn't actually happening. Yeah, there's a lot of really goofy and fun, um, fun clips from this movie. And mm. it's definitely nice that we kind of got a continuation of like, OK, what happened after? Because the anime definitely left you in a spot of like, OK, like they confess, but like they're not dating like they're not it, it left you like with like all right what's next like they confess yeah. but i want to know more so well, especially definitely... that especially that clip at the end of this anime where it briefly shows kaguya's hair like ice, yeah flicker downward and you're like uh-oh but um yeah. there's also a great scene where like kaguya ice kaguya is trying to uh, get mayuki to share her his uh lunch with her kind of similar to how she did early in the series and she gets intercepted by both Chica and um, um, Miko, and like literally, instead of like telling them no, she literally insults them and calls them fat. fat. <laughs> to the point where they both run out of the room crying. Well, Chica goes to go run and work out because Chica is Chica. Yes. Uh, Miko just runs out crying because Miko. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It, There's also another like fun scene too, where it's again like Ice Kagi is trying to get him to like do something and like she's like trying to get him to hold her hand like walking home and then eventually she's like i'm calling a cab and she well, just gets a drive ride home well the whole time she's like rubbing her hands together like like extremely like quickly and she, i tell um and she's all like my hands are so cold, cold i wish i had a way to warm them up and Mayuki the whole time is trying to be like, what does she mean by this? And she's like flailing her hands around like a crazy person. Uh, till eventually she just gets fucking tired of it and then decides, I'm getting a cab, I'm leaving. <laughs> you suck right now. He gets it later on because he's a guy. He's slow. To the, he's slow yeah. to the draw. They they do. They are slow. Um, <laughs> now you see what I'm dealing with right now. I'm desperately trying to keep it my mic from falling off the table. Again. <laughs> again. But yes, yeah, so like there I will say the best part about this film is the voice acting. Like um Oh yeah. Aaron, and it, uh, it is really nice to have um Aaron Discmew back as my Yuki. Yeah. Cause Not like that... I mean the other guy did a really great job. But like mm. it just wasn't the same, you know. And it was nice yeah. to have. And didn't they redub the actual episodes too? So he essentially had to. He could not do season three initially because he, his voice got strained and he was put on like doctor's orders not to act for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, his voice recovered. So during the in the meantime, uh, Clifford Ch uh, Chapin, I think his name is, uh, yeah. did did the lines instead. Um, Which he they've did a since really good job. Mm. But he's close not, enough. It's just like when you stir and the changes. It's like um, it's kind of like um, Kagome and like Inuyasha. Like if you're mm -hmm. watching like directly, you go directly from see the final episode of the regular season to like final act. It's such a massive jarring shift. But um. Shit over. <laughs> but um if you uh if you actually chopper no she <laughs> broke chopper <laughs> oh well <laughs> I got you can fix it <laughs> you can fix it get out of my house <laughs> get out of here I'm sorry I've been so distracted but like have you physically seen what I've been dealing with for the past five minutes which has been this insane oh cat anyways yep. okay She's but yeah, like we were saying, though, uh, Clifford Chapin did a good enough job, but um, they've actually replaced his lines with uh, Aaron Disku's uh, redubbed lines. They also dubbed yeah. the raps, <laughs> like the raps from that episode <laughs> are now perfect, fully dubbed, which is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, like there's stuff like that, like Jade Saxton is amazing as Chica again. Um, oh, Alexis yeah. Tipton is great as Kaguya. Amelie. Is Basically, Amelie? She's in here somewhere, I think. Uh, isn't she? Um, what's her name? Um, I, I not. 
I'd have to look at the cast to be honest. I can't. I remember. thought she was blonde haired girl, like blonde haired uh, assistant. Oh, hi, hi, Saka. I think she, she is. I'm pretty certain she is. Um, I'd have to double check. I think so. The voice sounds familiar. Yes. Yeah, but anyways, but yeah. I will say. So, what were your final thoughts though on the film? Like overall, like what would you? What did you rank so, it as? I gave it a seven out of ten. My reasoning is, so I watched the, um, I watched the. Well, I read the manga before I watched it, so I knew exactly what was going to happen. And as a um, adaption of the manga, it is. I mean, there's some stuff cut. Like, there's some side plot stuff they cut out for time that yeah. I'm hoping they address in future seasons. Um, but as an adaption, it's great. My problem with it is though. The episodes being splitting it up into four episodes doesn't help doesn't help it in this yeah. case, but the movie itself, especially because the animation is only slightly better than the show itself. Um, in reality, this movie feels like a very long episode of the show in a lot of ways, which isn't bad, but it is also noticeable that it doesn't. I, I assume it probably felt different if you watched it in the theaters yeah i'll definitely agree with that as for you so i gave it a six only i will say like when i first watched because i was the one who introduced the show to you bill you're welcome um i watched season one and two and i like loved it and then i watched season three and i was like oh yeah this is still good and then i watched this and i was like oh it's fine. Like, I I mean, like, it's not that it was bad. It's just, like, I feel like because of what the plot was and because it was kind of a little more serious of, like, okay, them taking the step from now they've confessed to now they're going to move into, like, the relationship dynamic, I feel like it did take away from some of just the fun quirkiness that you loved about mm -hmm. the show originally. But I... Um, but it had to. Like, it's something that it was kind of unavoidable because, like, I mean, at this point, they've confessed, you know? So they can't be doing the shenanigans anymore of, like, ooh, is she, who wins, who loses? It's kind of, we've moved on from that. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I, something I really loved about the show is gone now. And, I mean, their relationship's great. I almost wish, like, there was more. Like, we went into a little bit farther with it, I guess is my complaint. I feel like it stopped a little too soon, and I I wanted to see like more of the relationship develop. So um, that a lot of that has to do with the fact that the manga does continue, and you no, do yeah, get a lot of I that know. stuff. Yeah, I just wish the film had more of that. Like, I wish it it went a little further on, mm -hmm. um, because I I feel like too, especially it didn't seem that long to me. I don't think it was like it was only like no, it's, an hour, right? It's like an hour and a half long. It's a pretty average anime film length. I feel like it could have gone longer. Like, I I've, I definitely feel like not, like, not that that, I don't want to say not much happened, but, like, in reality, it was, like, it really only focused on one part, and I feel like it also could have probably been smushed into, like, a little shorter, and they could have added more. So, I gave it six. I definitely didn't hate it, and I will probably watch more, but... I also would rather watch his other series. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I will I say. Just, oh. Hello. She's back yeah. on the ground. I will, but she's <laughs> I will say the series takes a notable turn in tone following this movie where the goof, well, the goofiness is definitely still there, but the whole love is war plot kind of takes a backseat. Yeah. Because they're together now, so we don't need that anymore. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't know how that's going to affect the show in the future. Like, I wonder if it is going to suffer because it's not that. And it's, I mean, like, I know some people will definitely, like, you, you're, you love the story. You love the characters. You're going to stick around. But I'm sure there's going to be some people who are like, eh, this isn't the same show anymore. I don't really want to watch it. I was into it for, like, the whole love is war aspect, you know? Yeah. So it will it's... be interesting to see. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm hoping that we get a season four. They haven't announced anything yet, so... I feel... Knows. My prediction is we're going to get more movies. I feel like they're going to high cue it. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so in the mean... I, I really liked it. I definitely recommend it just for the, the dub alone, because Ian Sinclair mm -hmm. fucking... Yeah, Shuskers. Ian Sinclair. <laughs> what a guy. Fucking legend. 
Um, and speaking of Ian Sinclair, he's in the next film we're going to talk about as well. <laughs> so the next film we watch, this is one that we've kind of like has been <laughs> sitting on the back burner for a while. We've watched this a while ago. And I mean, we've watched also alter alternate iterations of it as well. I guess. Well, yeah, the, the, it spawned literally one of Alex's favorite animes. <laughs> no, yeah, it did. Like it literally, it's, it's one of my favorites. I'm rewatching it right now. <laughs> so the film we're talking about is of course Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. Not Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm not <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh is not one of my favorite animes. That's just garbage that's kind of good. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so going going into Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. So I guess for a little backstory, this was like the first original piece of animation from like Dragon Ball Z since GT, not counting like there Since was the these... garbage era. So there was a couple like OVAs that never got dubbed over here, particularly like the one that showcases um <laughs> Vegeta's brother. Um but yeah, this was like the first major <laughs> oh, piece yeah, of um... he has a brother that's like what's his name? Like Radish or something? No, that's Goku's brother. Oh shit, um, never mind. <laughs> no, he I, does, I still he... need to watch the original Dragon. That's yeah. that's my plan to watch next. That is my point. But um he's got a uh he's got a little brother named Harble who's like a little skinny guy. Ah. It's, but he looks like Vegeta. Uh but that's besides the point. He's um, like alternate universe Vegeta. So the reasoning apparently the reasoning behind why this film was made was because uh Dragon Ball Evolution came out and Toriyama basically did not want that to be the thing Dragon Ball ended with. Mm. Um what we'll was Evolution? To... That was the live at <laughs> That was the live oh, action. Film. Okay, I didn't know that. That you should said live action. Okay, so caught garbage was the last thing. <laughs> oh, it is lovely. It is a lovely movie that I need to watch again at some point just for memes. We but, should um, do a podcast episode on that live action. Terrible live action. <laughs> yeah, we can bring in Matt for that one because I'm sure he's got things to say. Yes. But um, anyway, so yeah, this film was essentially a continuation of the Dragon Ball story following. Uh, the end of Z, not counting. So basically, it takes place at, after like Goku comes back to life, but before the the tournament that at the end of Z that leads into GT. Kind of, um, this takes place after that, and this movie essentially removes GT from canon. It, it, it says, it, "Magic Eraser, go away." <laughs> this didn't happen. <laughs> well, not so much that. It's more. It said, "We're gonna take this thing." And put it over here in another yeah. universe, <laughs> so we don't have to deal with it anymore. Um, I mean, there is alternate universes in the new continuity, so it makes sense. Well, there's also the the game uh, Xenoverse. I believe GT is in one of the many universes you can visit in that game. So, yeah. <laughs> but um. <laughs> So this movie essentially takes place directly after, and it involves the god Bulma's of birthday party. That is a subplot, yes, but the main plot is the god of no, destruction. No, the main plot's Bulma's birthday party. What the <laughs> fuck movie? <laughs> but anyways, so um, no. the god of destruction <laughs> is a cat named Beerus, and He's the best cat, a best Alex boy best cat i love beerus he's my favorite character in dragon ball i this, love him. this movie literally introduced two of the best characters in dragon ball history with beerus the god of destruction and his assistant who we later find out is actually a lot more important than that uh weiss who is an angel yeah and they are we love him goof they are basically him. just goofy assholes <laughs> like they're basically just like talking about like all this shit and like how like beerus destroys basically all these planets and how he was going to destroy the Saiyans, but he had Frieza do it instead. Mm. And then he, then he find he basically gets reminded of the Super Saiyan God, and he wants to discover this God. So he goes on a trek to find the remaining Saiyans, which are Goku and his family. Yep. So and then we Vegeters. cut to... Don't well, forget Vegeta. <laughs> they have Vegeta, too. Um, They're not family. The, the humans are all one big happy family. All right, <laughs> let's, all right. let's be the, real. The, the Dragon Ball gang of friendship. We'll yep. call it that. <laughs> so then we, we cut to Bulma's birthday party and we get to see... The main plot of the film. Basically fan service showing all the different characters. Then they've been re 
Bulma's butt shot isn't in this movie. <laughs> no, no, that was um, that was super. <laughs> you said fan service. Well, I mean, you get drunk Bulma. <laughs> I'm kidding, and... I'm kidding. <laughs> She's drunk most of the party. She is. Um, I mean, rightfully, what else do you do on your birthday? I like how they they basically stuck every character that they could fit here. So like, you got like uh, Chi Chi, the kids, like the Ox Kings here. All the characters introduced in OG Dragon Ball, like uh, Oolong, uh, Pu'er, Yamcha, Tien. Although most of them in the background don't do much. They're just there. <laughs> They're just um, there for you to go <gasps> and then never see you. <laughs> yep. And then meanwhile, Vegeta's being emo and fighting in the training center and avoiding the party. Yes. And Goku's I'm avoiding insane. them. <laughs> Goku's <laughs> off training on another oh, yeah, planet. On King Kai, Kai's planet, right? Because yep. they keep hiding behind like a sandbag wall and they're like, please don't hurt us. Well, he already destroyed King Kai's planet once and he doesn't want to do it. He, they, they're worried he'll do it again. And they're already <laughs> dead too, right? They're yeah. already dead. Because of Goku. <laughs> yes. Um, and eventually they find out Beerus is on the way to go find uh, the the Saiyans and they basically tell Goku, go hide. <laughs> like, we don't want you doing anything stupid. Yep. And of course, Goku being stupid of course he immediately wants to fight beerus when he shows up and gets taken out in his super saiyan 3 form relatively quick his his mullet form with no eyebrows it is the no weirdest. eyebrow mullet <laughs> and what's funny is like the whole time beerus just kind of toys with goku because beerus is it's beerus isn't really a villain he's just kind of a uh, he's just a prick really yeah um, i mean no he's a destroyer god he wants to destroy that's bad. yeah, <laughs> but he's not really villainous. He's literally just doing what he's his job. But he's yeah, kind of, I mean, he's kind yeah. of a he's kind of a prick about it a lot of the time. Well, and also, like they didn't the Majin Buu ate all the pudding, so of we're course not, he needs to destroy Earth. <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought we were there yet. But meanwhile, it then cuts back to uh, Vegeta in the in the training room, and he basically gets told, um. Goku's been taken out. Beerus is heading that way. And Vegeta has like this PTSD flashback of like himself as a kid with his dad's being basically stomped on by a beat a little bitch. Beerus. So he's immediately terrified. Yeah. And we also get the subplot of the Pilaf gang making their first appearance since original Dragon Ball. Yeah. And they're all uh, babies. So this is actually a giant dig at GT because in GT, they were the ones that made the wish that turned Goku into the kid. Ah, and now so they're kids. As a, as a, I'm assuming a, uh, a take that at GT. They made them kids in this, um, because they were like older, very much, very much like middle aged adults in original Dragon Ball. Yeah, so they and should now, be elders at this point. They were elders in GT, like they were, um, very old, but now they're babies. <laughs> well, not really babies. They're like children Young, trunks age they're like yeah. trunks age trunks and goten yeah. and basically they're going after the dragon balls of course and they're all there just for comic relief and they're yes perfect perfect for it i Goofy forgot honestly hijinks. watching z and then watching g uh super makes me realize how much i miss the pilaf king and z because they're <laughs> great comic relief they are they're very very goofy um as i've been watching it right now they're, they're always a fun little goofballs but um going back to the party then we get like Beerus shows up and vegeta's all trying to like keep him from seeing the party Distract. and then bulma shows up famous dance not yet we'll get there um you want to be there now bulma shows up fucking wasted and basically just invites Beerus to the party and she's all like hey, everybody vegeta actually has friends, has friends. <laughs> and then uh Beerus proceeds to like enjoy all the food at the party hangs out with all the people he basically has a great time and it's like yeah. oh this this might go well until uh um until mr saiyan tries to fight him in which case uh then he falls over drunk and videl has to apologize for him in which case um beerus kind of just lets it go until they do this little party trick thing where the pilaf gang stole a dragon ball and then they actually have guns and Gohan drunk does his great say a man routine and ends up shooting not only Videl, oops, but oh, also uh 
Oh, pregnant, uh, Videl. Yes, <laughs> he doesn't know this yet, though. Um, also, I don't actually. I think we only find out then because that's when uh, Dende uh, heals her and finds out. But um, yeah. He also one of the bullets ricochets and hits Beerus in the head, and he's he gets it starts to get angry to the point where Vegeta does the bingo dance. The bingo dance, and, and they're on the boat in this in this one. No, no, no. The boat? the boat was for the anime version. The movie ah. they're in Bulma's backyard, which I think is oh. just better. Yeah, I couldn't remember. I was brain farting. I was like, was it the boat or was it? Because I watched both of them recently, and then I was getting confused. But Beerus yeah, I took it for the backyard. Well, Beerus is just a freaking prick in the freaking anime version. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that appeases him for about five minutes until he wants to try some pudding, and then who eats all the, eats all the pudding? Yes. I mean, Beerus. like. Same. I would also eat all the pudding if I had. The worst part is though, he only all he had to do was give him one, but no, Boo has to be an ass <laughs> about it. I mean, Boo is also one of the comic relief characters in the show because they constantly give him a chance, and then he just fucks everything up every See, time. You, you haven't seen Z, so you don't know Boo's backstory yet. Well, isn't he like evil? It's complicated. Okay. It's very, I gotta watch very it. It's on my list. I gotta get through all this other shit first. Yep. <laughs> but because this uh, Beerus begins to attack all the and everyone goes into fight mode and they all get owned really quick. Yes. Um. And then because Bulma basically <laughs> Bulma basically calls him out and about it on his shit, and he just straight up bitch slaps her down. My Bulma. And this, and this causes Vegeta to actually become powerful enough to fight Beerus for couple minutes yeah it's a pretty badass moment yeah until it's but until he still it's not. loses yeah he's still a fucking failure and then even need it. we get some great character development where like they're trying to like beerus is all like let's do rock paper scissors and if you win i won't destroy the planet and it's like you piggy boy and then they think oh beerus thinks i'm a I'm a pig pig, not a man pig. So he's going to immediately, <laughs> immediately think, think I, I, I can only do um, paper because I only has hooves or pig hooves. Yes. But of course, they say their plan out loud and Beerus has giant fucking ears. And yeah, hear he's a cat. yeah, so it ends up just like completely backfiring on them. And then, of course, Goku makes his triumphant appearance. Yes. And then they discover the, the Super Saiyan God ritual, which... They have to summon Shenron to yep. figure it to out. To tell and them then, how to do it. And then they try to do it and they fail. Because they need... They don't have enough Saiyans. Yep. They need six Saiyans total, five to transfer the power and one to receive the power. And they only have five total until Videl decides to mention she's pregnant. Yep. So six and, partial Saiyans. Yep. And what's funny is going back to the beginning of the film, there's a great foreshadowing moment where when Whis mentions um, there are five Saiyans on Earth, but then later mentions Goku is on another planet. Mm. A very a, a, a hint that you might miss the first time around. Wink, wink. So but yes, yeah, so pregnant. Goku ends up becoming the Super Saiyan God, which is, yes. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> I hate the god form. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You don't like his Barbie form? It's not even that He's it's... He's a Barbie girl in his Barbie world. <laughs> so basically all the god form is is his hair turns pink. His it gets eye, a little he, thinner. He gets skinnier and a little tanner. Like yeah. almost orangey. And he's stronger. The reason I why I don't... I think should play the Barbie girl theme every time. Super the reason I, God is on screen. The reason I don't like this form very much is just because it basically replaces uh, uh, Super Saiyan 4. And Super Saiyan 4 is one of the few things from GT that people actually like. It, yeah, I have seen pictures. I'm like, that is pretty cool. Well, it's, a, it's, it's original. better than mullet no eyebrows. <laughs> well, it's also not just his hair is pink now. No, it's um, pink. <laughs> uh, well, and also, Super Saiyan God is so trivial because it gets immediately like replaced within the next movie, anyways. And guess what? That one is blue. <laughs> that one's blue, Super but that Saiyan one's more. Blue. But that one's more like Super Saiyan. That one at least has like the bluish, like the blue light that makes it kind of like epic looking. 
God form is just lame. <laughs> I won't lie. But this it comes the fight, back, though, it does make another appearance. It makes many appearances um, later on. I will say, though, sure. I really uh, love the fight in the movie. Not so much the anime. The anime I felt was too drawn out. Mm. The fight between Goku and Beerus in this movie is so fucking epic. Um, especially because... <laughs> Especially because Goku ends up losing his uh, his the god form halfway through the fight, and he doesn't even realize, and he just starts fighting with regular Super Saiyan. He holds his own, yeah. like the whole time, and eventually it ends with like Beerus creating this giant fucking ball of destruction, and Goku basically overpowers it. He somehow regains the god form on his own, and like basically diffuses it. Mm-hmm. And Beerus is essentially so impressed by this that he basically decides, you know what? If if you just admit your defeat, I'll let you win. Yeah. And Goku basically is like, I give. And he, then Beerus explains that there's millions of universes out there. <laughs> foreshadowing. Um, Me- and that Whis is actually the, the guy who trained Beerus. And that Whis is a bit, has a bit more behind him than uh, meets the eye. Meanwhile, Whis is eating fucking like, dessert <laughs> as this is happening. <laughs> which is great. Yeah, he's just still on Earth. Like this whole time they've been fighting, and Weez has just been like continuously ordering sushi and food, and oh, it's so silly. Also, Weez is voiced by Ian Sinclair, and it's great. Yes. Also, the voice of Brooke from One Piece, another great character. Also, Beerus is voiced by Jason Douglas, who was the cat in Azamanga Dayo. Also, oh, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that that's a your, thing. Your love or hate isn't the issue. Each <laughs> one to me, those. <laughs> I love I that cat. It. No, Beerus is superior cat. But then, of course, Beerus goes back, drops uh, Goku back down to Earth and literally just throws him on the ground. Yeah. Which is my favorite scene. Because he literally floats him down gracefully and then just knocks him on the ground. I also love the scene, the next scene where he's like, all right, I will destroy Earth. And then he just goes, Pew! Yeah, he <laughs> destroys this little pebble and he's like, <laughs> all right, I'll come back and destroy the rest later when I feel like it. Okay. Unless you provide me good food, and then I will not destroy. Yeah, like there's also a really sweet, like heartwarming scene where uh, Goku starts falling towards Earth, like because he gets overwhelmed by uh, the the fireball, and you think he's gonna he, this is it for him, and then it, it cuts to uh, he, he sees all of his uh, friends and family, like in kind of basically cheering him on, but uh, a little heartwarming moment is the first person he thinks of is Chi Chi. My wife. Which is sweet. Uh, also, it's the one time in the series that uh, Vegeta calls Goku Goku. Oh, he does? Yeah, because all the characters Kakarot. say Goku. Now, all the characters say Goku there, and Vegeta's one of them, and you hear Sabat's voice, so it's like, yeah, that's the one time Vegeta calls Goku Goku. It's just funny. But yeah, I wonder and if then he's we... like, I take it back. It's Kakarot. But anyways, then the film ends with um, beans. Beerus goes back to his uh, home world to eat nap again. But first, he wants to eat some of the sushi, and he tries the wasabi, and it it's too overwhelming for him, <laughs> and he destroys like twelve <laughs> planets in the process. Yep. And then goes back to sleep. Uh, and the film kind of leaves it on a cliffhanger because there was more films after this. But um, I love the ending credits for this movie where they go through all the manga pages. Mm. which is really nice the whole f- oh yeah there's also the ending scene where they're chilling back at bulma's party and then goku reveals that he was watching the fight the whole time before he actually <laughs> popped in and they're all like what the hell goku <laughs> like because that's where he imitates vegeta's like my bulma <laughs> my bulma this is the best scene this is the best scene that movie the whole movie my bulma! this film was like the perfect introduction for what dragon ball super would become because it ends up, um, this film was followed then by Resurrection F, which was the big return of Frieza film. Yes. And then that was followed by Super itself, which yeah. would redo both the films both in those. the anime. And I will say I much prefer the Dragon Ball Battle of Gods version of the events mm-hmm. over the anime version. To a degree, like there's some good stuff in there that they added to flesh it out. Yeah. But... For the I most part, think... I 
I think both of them, it's like both of the films they readapted. I'm like, there's things that I liked about the films, but there's things that I liked about the anime more too. So Resurrection F, I actually think the show did better than the film. I, I agree. I agree with that. Definitely. And I agree with like the film being better for um, Battle of Gods too. Yeah. Like I gave this one an eight, like eight, almost a nine. Like I love this movie. Like it is one of my favorite. If I just need like, I need a stupid anime film to put on. It's something that'll just give me, get a laugh out of me. Like I'll just throw a battle of gods on and that'll be my, uh, my, my enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think in eight too. I mean, like this is, this became one of my favorite series um, mm. where I was like, not a dragon ball fan at all. Like I'd never really watched dragon ball before. And then I got into super. So yeah, I mean, this movie helped get me into the series. So it is a said? perfect, Perfect mix of the storytelling and humor of original original Dragon Ball, and then the action of Z in like one very solid package, and which I think works really well for me because mm. I love like One Piece, which is this mix of like silly but serious and good fights and stuff. So I think it, that's what really drew me to it. Mm. Also off topic but the episode like you know how there was like two episodes where they did like a dragon ball um in one Cro piece the crossover, crossover yeah yeah it's it's on hulu now so I guess what yeah I'm they dubbed it after this yeah they dubbed it too which is cool i'm watching it after this <laughs> nice but yeah so this one was great and then of course we have to end off our three anime films with the with a dumpster fire <laughs> with, with a piece of shit that i kind of like and dislike at the same time uh, i'm not gonna lie bill i fell asleep during this movie that is fair so did mom when <laughs> I, we she took I, me to see it in the theater <laughs> i remember i like honestly i remember the beginning briefly and then like the ending but the middle i don't know i fell asleep <laughs> that's fair i don't know Be because <laughs> so you're unlike carry this because i don't know what happened and I'm so, not going to rewatch that garbage. That's, that's fair. <laughs> so this movie came. This movie came out. Oh, so way back in 2004. Why is Kaiba such a dork, though? Seriously, he's, he's not loser. as big. A, he's not as big a dork as he is in Dark Side Dimensions, which is a great film. I don't care what anyone says. Um, <laughs> I'm a dork. <laughs> I mean, you have to admit. Before we get into this film, you you admit though. Dark Side Dimensions is a fucking masterpiece compared to this thing. Oh, yeah. Compared to this one? Hell yeah. Like, that one I was mean, actually, I didn't fall asleep in, and it was actually watchable. Well, no, that's a good, that's a pretty good film, like, for what it is. Like, all oh, things yeah, No, it's good. Especially Dorky Kaiba. That's my favorite part. Oh, now, he's an extreme dork in that film. And this one, he's only sort of a dork. I mean, he's still a dork. He, I, yeah, he's got a jet <laughs> shape like Yugi. He's got a jet. <laughs> jet shaped like the fucking blue eyes white dragon because <laughs> he's you know, a loser you know what is though better about this film they say the Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> Yu -Gi -Oh! <laughs> the Yu-Gi-Oh line Yu-Gi says it he says the thing yep Ugh, so that's this the one film, thing the, the other film lacked this film go. came out <laughs> during like the peak of Yu-Gi-Oh's popularity in the states like this is when the card game was at its fucking peak this is those the anime stupid arm things and was like yeah. i'm so cool yeah the dual discs everyone had a dual disc <laughs> we were all cool it's a little um, card holder oh yeah it was it was pretty dumb in hindsight but um especially when you actually use them to duel but uh that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> but yeah so the actual fil the film itself was released during like the big height of the anime height of the card game uh released in theaters i remember because i remember me and Mom took this took me to see this for one of my birthdays. She fell asleep. She probably doesn't even remember this at all. Um, but my my favorite part about going to see this movie was you got free cards for going. <laughs> like they would give you cards with oh, your ticket. Oh, that's kind of cool. Well, that's yeah. like when I've seen some anime film. Like I saw the My Hero film, and then they um, gave you like a little manga, a little mini manga, hmm. which is pretty cool. I love when they do stuff like that. Or like when uh, you went to see Pokemon and you got like a Pokemon cards, it's whatnot. It was like they would do that stuff back in the day. Yeah. Uh, they still do so, it sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it was very free. Like back 
Yu-Gi-Oh! was in particular was pretty frequent with it because like if you got like the games, the games would come with cards a lot of the time, like just all sorts mm. of fun stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so this film takes place following the uh so it was like right before like the stupid waking the dragons arc, but right after the uh Shadow Realm arc where Yugi basically got all of the Egyptian god cards. Mm. And oh yeah, and everyone trying... wants to fight fight Yugi yeah. for his cards. Yeah, so the the, can- the canicity of this film is debated. Like it's it's not there's not a lot in it that Basically, this film is completely ignored after it's over and like never gets brought up again. <laughs> it's like, um, just forget this happened, please. Okay, thank you. But there, there's also nothing really in it that makes it not canon. Yeah, so I mean, like, it really, I'm like, it could, it's like, it could have happened, but. It, it's very dubious, the kinicity of it, and that's, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, so this was peak four kids. So four kids produced this, and you get the full four kids cast. Like Dan Green is Yugi, Eric Stewart is Kaiba, uh, Wayne Grayson is Joey Wheeler. <laughs> Joey Wheeler, yeah. Basically, all the classic uh, actors were in this. Like, because it was during the peak of the show, and yes. I remember seeing this in the theater. Like, it the animation is clean, but it's not like amazingly animated i'd say Mm. like there's a whole like subplot about this alternate like millennium item called the pyramid of light which was created (laughs) by the egyptians and it's evil and they're they found it on an excavation and oh yeah that is a little dark though like that first like scene of them in the excavation site and like the door closes and all you hear is them screaming and it's just like (laughs) i'm like i guess they're dead (laughs) also also they they steal this pyramid thing and put it on display and then it mysteriously vanishes and then you find out that the fucking mummy that was buried with it came back to life and just fucking walked out it was just like, what's up? I'm here. There's a fucking <laughs> I want dis- my pyramid back. There's a fucking disturbing scene too where the fucking like he like re like fucking animates back to life and he like warps his skin back on and it's like Ew. Yeah. But uh before the character's name is Anubis, by the way. He's another Egyptian god kind of character. But uh um, Yeah, well he's named after an Egyptian god for sure. Yeah. But during the lead up to that whole thing, there's like this whole arc where like all these like trainers want to face Yugi because he has the Egyptian god cards now. And yep. during the whole time, well, first like they gotta face Joey Wheeler. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole thing where like Joey and Tristan are basically trying to keep uh keep the trainers back, like hold them back while Yugi and Taya can get away. And there's a scene where like they fight um where Joey does a duel and a little bit of a development here is that Joey has the red eyes black dragon again, which is implied that it's basically an implication that Joey won the duel at the end of uh, the, the, the the Shadow Realm arc. Because uh, he basically, uh, to get his red eyes back, he had to beat Yugi in a duel, and he, it's implied that he beat Yugi and got his card back. Whee! But um, besides that, they basically, Joey gets beat up by a nurse card. That That, that happens. And then there's a subplot with Kaiba where Kaiba's such a dork that he's trying to find ways to beat um, Yugi. Beat so he Yugi. goes he goes to fucking Pegasus, his island. Oh, and this scene, I was like, what a fucking loser. Like, he's just making fun of Pegasus the whole time. And the voice acting in this scene is just chef's kiss of hot <laughs> garbage. It is the... It's- it's so bad. Like, I was watching the scene. I was like, this is terrible. The voice acting was awful. That whole scene. Especially Pegasus. He's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, The best part is the scene. actors. <laughs> the, a- the actors aren't even bad. The performances and direction is just so fucking terrible. It was awful. It was so bad. Like, I'm watching. I'm like, this is terrible. Uh, so basically the fight between Pegasus is one giant fan service scene because it's basically a callback to when Kaiba lost to Pegasus the first time it's basically Kaiba turns the tables on him and 
<laughs> it's so dorky though, because every time it's like it's literally just the same two lines back and forth, just reiterated differently. Like of like where Pegasus is like, "Ho ho ho, I got you," and, and Kaiba's like, "Uh uh-uh, uh, you don't." And then it's literally just that. See, it's, 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 it's not literally as... that back and forth like five it... times. It's not as entertaining as like the original Pegasus fight where like he's like he's like use the he's like well no where he's like use the dual disc. He's like, ooh, how do I do it? Do I throw it like a frisbee or do I roll it like a drum? <laughs> and he's like it's like none of that fun stuff because Pegasus doesn't have his cheating anymore because he lost oh. his eye. But um Yeah, so that whole thing happens and Kaiba wins and he Pegasus kind of alludes that he has a card that could possibly beat the um mm the uh, Egyptian god cards and then Kaiba goes through the deck and he's like oh you liar you, uh, there's two cards here and he takes both of them and Pegasus is like no there's not there's only one because <laughs> it was implied that in the middle of the night um, a mysterious force put an evil another card in the deck dun, 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 basically dun, foreshadowing dun, one of those cards is no good like bad <laughs> so then of course Kaiba challenges Yugi to a duel and because, uh, of course, he does on his fucking blue eyes, white dragon jet in his fucking <laughs> theme park dueling dome. Yes. Kaiba has fuck you money and he just uses it to make this fucking Kaiba has, card. I'm a big old dork money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's what he, it is. Basically. So the fight starts and then Kaiba immediately plays this card called Pyramid of Light, which Spoiler warning is the card that Pegasus did not create and was placed in his deck, and it's not good. Yep. And it, it means... essentially creates this giant pyramid that prevents you even playing the Egyptian god cards. And then Anubis shows up and basically hijacks the duel. <laughs> yep. And then Yugi gets sealed inside the Millennium Puzzle along with Trish. Tristan and Joey. And there's this wonderful scene of like Tristan and Joey exploring around, being like hell's this place and then yugi just runs by screaming being like like run away and then um there's like zombies chasing it's it's fucking ridiculous so so i fell asleep like right after kaiba's fight and then when i woke up is when they started like when um when it's like Anubis like takes like a form and I was like, who the fuck is that guy? And that's why I woke up and I was like, what's happening? And I was so confused. I was like, I'm not rewinding. This. Yeah. Uh, it's implied that so basically it's good you... to get like a nice little recap of what's actually happening. This trust me, this this is not a great recap either, because hey, the movie it's doesn't better make any... than sleeping through it. Yeah, basically, there Yugi's trapped in the puzzle, and then there, a bunch of weird shit happens, and eventually they escape and destroy the pyramid. Uh, because the other card that Kaiba had was the shi- blue eye shining dragon, which was the one Pegasus Ooh. did create. And they eventually break the pyramid of light, and you get this really fucking gruesome scene of the fucking like pyramid burning and like disintegrating, and then the fucking mummy like disintegrates, and it's like. We didn't yeah. need to see that shot, but we sure saw it. We saw it, and you can't unsee it. Kind but you get like a great. Day. You kind of get like a great climax of um, of uh, Yugi basically defeating everything with uh, the three Egyptian god cards all working together, which which is fun. Uh, and then they basically leave and go on their merry way. Only like Yugi destroyed the dual dome. <laughs> yes. Basically, Kaiba just gets left in his sorrows and. The- Excuse me. And then the kid- his emo, his emo corner, out, out the edge. Yep. And then the gang basically just kind of goes off on their merry way, and it basically ends like any other episode of the show. It's very much this was a fan service movie designed to sell trading cards and toys. Yeah, I'm sure those blue eyes shining dragons sold. And that oh, every everybody Pyramid wanted the blue eyes shining dragon. You got Pyramid of Light with the with the uh, the the home media version. Because ah. I had the card for a while and it was fucking useless. Did you um, have the shining? I never dragon? had blue eyes shining dragon. I had the two weird demon beast cards that Anubis played. Because uh, you got those at the movie theater. Ah. Um, I think you got shining dragon too. I didn't get that one though. I only got the. Uh, the... <coughs> so I think you. Got, I think it was like you got one card each. So I got one and the mom got one. 
<laughs> and the mom just gave me the card. Mom gave you yours, yeah. Yeah. Aww. And it was like, well, what was mom gonna do with the trading card? Um, <laughs> Give it to her child. Yeah. Her child. So I had the two. It was the two Egyptian ones that Anubis had, and that was I just had those. Oh, uh, I never yeah. had shining. Never had. Sh I was jealous too because I wanted shining. Aww. Womp, but womp, womp. yeah, I gave this movie a four because it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a three. <laughs> it, it's. It was I put it on par with Sonic X, where it's like it's funny for the wrong reasons. How fucking dare you? That is a work of art. Sonic X deserves better. It deserves a 10 out of 10 with Chris Thorndike and his <laughs> creepy grandpa and his screwdrivers. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, you, so. You take it back right now. Those were the three films. Take it I back. Sonic X is a masterpiece. I didn't say it was bad. I said it was okay. shit. <laughs> Get out of my house. Wait, yeah. So, out of the three movies, I mean, Dragon Ball Z Battle God is the best one. I like, oh, yeah. I really enjoyed Kaguya sama. Yu Gi Oh! shit. <laughs> like, that's, that's, yeah. Like, Yu Gi Oh! is just not a good film. It's, it's, it's good great thing. if you're drunk and you really need something stupid to watch. But or if you that, need to take a good nap. Yeah. Which I yeah. needed, apparently. Honestly, that movie was better back in the day when you were a kid and you were living the moment. But nowadays, it's like, what? What? If you if you want to watch a Yu Gi Oh movie, watch Dark Side of Dimensions because oh, yeah. that's at least a quality film. Yeah, animation's great. Recommend. Story's great. Brought back all the voice actors and their directions actually good. And you can listen to our podcast episode where we already talked about it, so you can do that. I think that too. yeah, I think it was like three anime films number two. Yes, Go check that out. Do that. Watch it. So Wait, I mean, yeah. listen to it. Watch with your ears. So listen. No. Um. Before we sign off, we mentioned that we we're going to have a announcement at the end. Uh, I'm going to let Alex take the floor here, real quick. Yes. So, uh, I'm going to be taking a little brief break. I just have a lot going on in my personal life, and. I kind of have to get through a lot of that, but it won't be for very long. I'm plan hoping to be back in December. I mean, as we're recording this, it's like the the second of November. So my goal is to be back hopefully um, the first week of December. I just I got to get through some work stuff and personal stuff first. Um, and I just I just I need a break because it's just been a little too much and I want this to be good, and I want Bill to enjoy it, too. And I don't want to be, like, a downer on the calls because I'm really stressed. So I'm going to take a break. Bill's going to either do some solos or maybe some, like, guest stuff. But I'm hoping to be back in December so we can do some fun, like, end-of-the-year stuff, which yep. would be great, and then kind of start fresh in the new year. Um, yeah, like, we'll, we'll definitely... I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, like, I'm not quitting. I just, I just need a break to kind of... I got to get through some life stuff right now. And, uh, but I appreciate all the support out there. And I mean, by the time like people listen to this, it, it really won't be that long. It'll only be like a couple episodes without me. Really? Yeah. Like three or four at most. Yeah. Um, so it won't yeah. be a big deal. So I'm actually going to, in the process of lining up a few, uh, temporary guests for, uh, a few episodes. I'm going to knock out a few episodes that Alex really didn't have a lot to say on anyways just yeah. to get him out of the way for now um in the meantime though we'll still be going alex will be back so there's this isn't a, we're not ending the show it's nothing like i just i gotta get through some life stuff first and it's yeah often i mean hopefully when i'm back i can come back with some like better news and stuff but i need the break i mean i think a lot of you have seen like i haven't been active on any of like discord or social media in general and i'm just it's been a lot of stress so i just need a break i need some time and then i can come back into it and just like go back to like enjoying it and not having it be like okay this is another thing i have to get done so yeah but yeah i'll be back uh i just i just need some time you know we all yep. need a break sometimes <laughs> Yeah. Unless you're Bill and you have two podcasts and you're just like insane. Uh, Maybe about three? Have, about, well, kind of. Uh, so actually, I, I'll use this time to announce that uh, me and uh, our. He lied. This podcast 
season ending. He knows. No. no. So me and um our, our buddy Matt, who's our server mod and close friend to, of ours, uh, we're we're starting a side project, which is kind of gonna. It's not really good. so calling it a new podcast is a bit of a stretch because it's gonna be posted in the GNC feed, mm-hmm. uh, mostly just to for convenience sake. But uh, uh the project is called the uh, uh Geek Addicts. And it is essentially going to be me and Matt talking about a very uh, a variety of different topics. Um, it's going to be so rather than releasing on Saturdays like GNC does, it's going to be a not a weekly right away. Probably going to be like an every couple of weeks kind of thing, uh, where every Monday we'll put out an episode. Of me and Matt talking about different topics, and it's going to be a side project kind of thing, uh, just for more content. Maybe we'll have a topic that Alex really isn't interested in, so I don't rather. Yeah. Than, Forcing her to, <laughs> forcing her to like this. Um, <laughs> so, well, to, this is your chance to talk about the N sixty four in a nice way. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, but yeah, so that'll be releasing fairly soon, and three um, D O should be back by December as well. So yeah, um, so just look. I mean, December should have a lot of great content, but <laughs> November we're just trying to make it through. Yeah. So expect Alex back around middle of November, uh, uh, middle of December, probably, depending yeah. on how many episodes I get recorded in the interim. Yes. But she'll definitely be back for Christmas and the yeah. uh, the year end specials. So <laughs> yeah, because we already that. have some cool stuff planned, uh, and we'll keep planning that in the background, and we'll be ready for some good content, and we'll all be re- well. I'll be refreshed. Bill will still be there. Someone yep. has to keep this going. <laughs> You can borrow Tilly if you want. She could be your co-host. I'm sure I'll. I'm sure I'll figure something out. But <laughs> just wanted to give you guys a heads up and uh, signing out for the last time for a little while. Uh, this is me and Alex, and uh, you can find the Gaming and Collecting Podcast on all your major podcasting platforms, <laughs> particularly Apple and Spotify. Um, you can follow us on. Uh, you can find all of our links at linktree slash the Barber Who Games and. Uh, you can join our Discord server, GNC Podcast Network. It's a fun time. You'll see some cursed stuff, and we, we're all nice there, so don't worry. But until next time, guys, we will see you all later. No Christmas music until after Thanksgiving. Do not play it. I don't want to hear it. It's not Christmas time yet. You got to eat that turkey first. That's all. Yeah, Thanksgiving's <laughs> irrelevant. How dare you? It's turkey season. I want... <laughs>